Hey everybody, it's Steve and Chelsea with Connect Up, your companion study to come follow me. Hi you guys. Welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is a little bit of a feast with Jesus. Just a little feast. Just a little feast. We are doing 2 Nephi 31 through 33. We are in March 18th, almost to Easter. We are so grateful for you. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. We love doing these videos. We love teaching you. We love all the comments and everything. Thank you so much for connecting. Our favorite comment was someone, Linda, who actually made brownies for a primary cat With class. a little bit of dog business in them. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. It was just an analogy. She said a boy actually did volunteer to eat and she's like, of course I didn't let him. But like, right? You know what I mean? Like, I think that was hitting a There's lot of people at home. Right? Always a boy who will do it. <laughs> Can I tell you a funny wow. story? Just totally off the cuff. I, one time in seminary, I was talking about the traps that Satan sets and I brought a gopher trap, like a little gopher trap, like this. And all I did was set it and put it on my podium desk. That's all I did. There was no treat. There was no candy. There was nothing. And there was some boy. No one touched it until this one boy. He was like, I could see him looking at us in the back of the class. I wasn't going to stop him. But I was like, he was looking. He just takes his finger and he goes, bang. And he put it right in the trap. He goes, slam. And he's like, ah! And I, I couldn't even help him because I was laughing so hard. And I was like, why do you do that? And he's like, he's like, I don't know. There are so many <laughs> analogies in that story. That's crazy. Whoopee! Oh man. It's so funny. So, what was her name? Linda. Linda, here's your fist bump, boom, and your high five. Whoopee! And your heart. Thank you so much. Guys, uh, just a little background on what's going on with the Scott Fam Jam. Um, yes, we will share what we're doing right now. Currently, we are moving yes. houses. Okay, we're selling the current house that we're in. And we're moving to family homestead land, where my my mom and dad were, my family, my great grandfather. Six generations. <clears throat> and uh, we're renovating a house up there. If my eyes look crossed. It's because <laughs> they're like puffy and all the things. It's because we've been renovating for two months straight. So with that comes a little bit of a a delay sometimes in the handouts and the emails and things. You know, you know, we don't. If you want to be a part of the connect up team, the technology they team, us. they can help us. I'm happy to receive any applications. But for now, we're going to step aside. I'm going to step aside for a screenshot that we haven't done in years. Is here we go. Like, just step aside. Just okay. here, there keep you go. going, Chelsea. They saw, your, they saw you. And now you... <laughs> <laughs> My head will be your in button it. on the top of your head is on the screen. Oh, All right, guys. So, there you go. That's grab, what's happening. Grab your scriptures. Yeah. Right there. Go ahead. <laughs> this is like the blooper we had last week. Did you guys see the blooper? I did another one exactly the same way this week. Um, oh, you said it. I mean, you said it so many times, and then you have to change it. So. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. So grab your scriptures and your journals and your scripture markers and slap the teenager beside you to wake him up. It's time for us to connect up. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> This is really good. We get to the end of 2 Nephi. You've made it through Isaiah. Congratulations. And now we get to the end part, and there's lots of goodness and really just juicy stuff in here that we get to study from Nephi. And it's it's a smaller section, so hopefully you read it and you felt and nourished and read it felt three the or four spirit. times. Because this is just so good. There's so much meat in here and so much of our Savior and his doctrine, which is so powerful and changes lives. So let's talk about this today. So Chelsea wanted to make sure that we drew a little bit of a road today. Uh -huh. And it's not orange or yellow, but we wanted to just, <laughs> Chelsea kept singing. Follow the yellow brick road, <laughs> okay. follow the yellow brick road. But we want to notice that this thing here, um, we talked- Oh, you forgot to put home there. Oh, I, well, you don't know? I didn't. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take you through the doctrine of Jesus Christ and we're going to take you through 2 Nephi chapter 31 through 33 in the analogy or in the doctrine that Nephi teaches about keeping us in the, the, the path that leads us to Jesus Christ. And, and in this he talks about the basic. Now let's go here so that we understand Nephi as he sets the stage for these chapters. As Nephi's ending his life and you can feel and hear an older, more mature Nephi in these verses. Like you can just feel it. It's different for Nephi. <clears throat> but I think this, you always teach this, this kind of thinking. And what he's, even though he's older and wiser, but there's still the simplicity of it, right? True. 
No, the but, complexity but, of the gospel. And I think that happens as we get older. Like, we, we then, do you guys notice that? As you get older, you're like, I'm just going to simplify life. I don't want to complicate this. And, yeah. And I did that in my midlife, and I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> you learn just, the lessons, right? Okay. And in chapter 31, verse 3, is where we want to start, because Nephi talks about plainness. You want to go? For my soul delighteth in plainness. For after this manner doth the Lord work among the children of men. He works in plainness, not complexity. For the Lord God giveth light unto the understanding. For he speaketh unto men according to their language and unto their understanding. So he's going to speak to you personally so you can understand and you can hear him. It's very individual and it's very unique to each of us, but he will teach you truth. Do you think he'll tell me in dad jokes? Possibly. Like, hey, I got one. I got one. I got one. <laughs> what do you call a sad strawberry? I don't know. A blueberry. A blueberry. <laughs> I actually like that one. That one's funny. Like <laughs> it's fruity. All right. So in, as Nephi teaches plainness, he teaches plainness in a way that he teaches the doctrine of Christ in a plain, simple way that we can understand. You don't need to overcomplicate, over just, it's just simple. So let's go. Let's go to chapter 31, verse 9 and 10. Nephi teaches us another one. Before we even get on the path, we want to go to chapter 31, verse 9 and and ten. And again, it showeth unto the children of men the straightness of the path and the narrowness of the gate by which they should enter, he, meaning Jesus Christ, having set the example before them. And he said unto the children of men, Follow thou me. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, can we follow Jesus, say we shall be willing to keep the commandments of the Father. This right here, this path, we should have like footprints all through yes. that path. Follow Jesus. Can you just see him like, follow me, you know, like, I know the way, I will show you the way. And if you're not sure, follow Jesus and you will be right. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Keep, follow those footprints. You know, I had to do that one time at a scout camp. Some guys left us in the dust and I was with these scouts that couldn't make it as fast. And the other ones ahead of us, they just left us. And I had to follow footprints until we found them. Um, oftentimes, I was coaching a, a man this week as I was doing some life coaching and I was talking to him about that path that he's on. Oftentimes, we will think, and I just want to clarify this, that don't, don't confuse yourself thinking that we're all doing it the exact same way all the time, like every single one of us. Like, the timing is, is exactly the same. But the covenants are the same. So some people take a little bit longer. They stray a little bit from the path. They have these, like, it just has a different experience. I, I was teaching in the missionary training center one time, and the district leader was an older, he was assigned to the district leader, called to be the district leader of that group. He was older. He was about 26. <clears throat> really amazing missionary. And, and when I asked him a story, like, why so long to get on your mission? Like, what, what happened? He goes, oh, man, quite an interesting story. He's like, I, I'm a... I never went to church. I was baptized at an early age. Never really went to church. Did young men's for a while, but never really did anything. He's like, and then I graduated, and uh, I became a tattoo artist. And I was like, what? Are you serious? He's like, yeah. And so I lived the life, and he's like, and when I realized that I went as far as I could in one direction, and there was nothing for me, a bishop knocked on my door, and I came back. And he actually... <clears throat> was tattooed but had no tattoos from here up the collar up and from here down you couldn't see anything I was like that's crazy wow. and you'd never know I, I just did not even after two and a half weeks of being with him I had no idea but it's an interesting <clears throat> process that this path that we were on and it's a beautiful process it's a sacred process and it's so unique to you so these are just steps to help remind you to come back if you're straying and follow the Savior, <clears throat> excuse me, follow him. He is the one who's showing us the way and he has shown us the way. And this is his doctrine. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Second Nephi chapter 31 <clears throat> verses 5 through 8. Okay. We're just going to go down the path. And now if the Lamb of God, he being holy, should have need to be baptized by water to fulfill righteousness, oh then, how much more need we, being unholy, to be baptized even by water, 
Now I would ask of you, my beloved brethren, wherein the Lamb of God did fulfill all righteousness in being baptized by water. Know ye not that he was holy, but notwithstanding he being holy, he showeth unto the children of men that, according to the flesh, he humbleth himself. And that's a huge step. You have to humble yourself before the Father and witness unto the Father that he would, would be willing, be obedient unto him in keeping his commandments. Powerful things. Wherefore, after he was baptized with water, the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the form of a dove. And again, it showeth unto the children of men the straightness of the path, the narrowness of the gate by which we should enter, he having set the example before them. Isn't it interesting how when Joseph Smith um, put the articles of our articles of faith, we believe that the first principles and ordinances of the gospel could also translate into we believe that the doctrine of Christ is first, first faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, second repentance, third baptism by immersion for the remission of sins, fourth the laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Does that seem pretty simple? I mean, some of you have been saying this for so long, but this is the path. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't. Make, make the covenant, keep the covenant, repeat. Make the covenant, keep the covenant, repeat. And as we have faith in Jesus Christ and follow his path, then it leads us to repentance. See, following Jesus leads us to repent. We're like, oh, I need to repent. Okay? <clears throat> Not away from Jesus. As we move to Jesus, we repent. As we move away from Jesus, we don't want to repent. And that's part of being humble, right? Um, Christ showed us the way there, too. He's like... He's humbling himself and witnessing unto the Father, like, I want to be better, and I want to be cleansed and change and be cleansed through the, the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ. And having that humility to step into repenting, what do you need to repent of, and what do you need to become more humble about? Get on your knees and ask for those answers to come and stepping in because this this continues every week if you've already been baptized right we partake of the um our renew our covenants every sunday partaking of the sacrament this humble like humbling yourself in humility repenting happens all the time so the house that we're moving into is about 30 years old <clears throat> and um it needs some renovations, okay? <laughs> yeah. But, <clears throat> but we're so grateful. We've knocked out walls. We've put in windows. We've put in new flooring. We've totally ripped out different places. But we've had to get into, like, places. Do you guys know when you renovate things, how you open things up, and you're like, wow, it looks like we need to do that, too? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. I want to read you in chapter 31, verse 11. And the Father said, Repent ye, repent ye, and be baptized in the name of my beloved Son. Oftentimes we get into the spiritual renovation of our life, and we're like, well, it looks like I need to fix that one too. Um, and sometimes I've had to call in plumbers and electricians and carpenters and, and cabinet makers and people who th do things that I don't do. Well, they do them much better than I do them. right? I, I do the farm ranch version. <laughs> what got us into this mess. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> you, You're getting way better at If it. any of you guys have been raised on a ranch and you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Make right? shift things, yeah. Um, and when we when we do when we renovate our, our own lives, um, we look at things and we go, Man, I need to fix that while I'm at this. I need to be able to do this. Don't be scared of it. It's part of the path. Okay? As we come around the, the gate, but the gate, let's go to the gate. Mm -hmm. Verse Chapter 31, verse 17. You'll notice this, it goes like this, it goes, and then the gate's over here. Path, gate. Go over, you read, you read, you read. I'm going to read it. You read it. All right. Here we go. Wherefore, do the things which I have told you I've seen your Lord and your Redeemer should do. For for this cause have they been shown unto me that ye might know the gate by which ye should enter. For the gate by which ye should enter is baptism and repentance. By the repentance, repentance by baptism. water, repentance baptism. and baptism by water, and then cometh the remission of your sins by fire and by the Holy Ghost. So that gate is so, and it's like, <clears throat> I don't need to be baptized. I was baptized in another. No, no, you need to be baptized, immersed by proper priesthood authority to enter into the gate. But is that it? It's like, is that it? You're like, well, I did it. Did it? Got water. Um, we've had these moments in life. I'll, I'll, I'm full of stories today. I'm going to share with you one more. There, 
missionaries. There was a well. I don't know if you even know this one. There was this missionary while I was serving a mission. He he was the first. Like, it was his first baptism that he had ever done, and he performed. And the lady came into the font, and and she was a little bit bigger than him. And but he was no slouch. Like he is a. And, and he says, the pre my mission president was there, and he, he walked in the back, and oh, he got so nervous. Anyway, he says the baptism prayer, going like a million miles an hour, and then he reaches up and he pile drives this <laughs> lady into the font. It was practically like a tidal whip out, open, she hit the bottom of the font, and then covered her with water. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and I, I kind of got the gills, so I kind of backed out of the room, and... and <laughs> And I came out the one door, my mission president came out the other door because he was giggling too. He was like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> Afterwards, he brought the missionaries together because he'd seen what happened. He said, elders. He said, elder, man, I've seen people be baptized by, by authority, but never with such power. <laughs> Have I done that? <laughs> and he stopped, he that. stopped and he said, elders, remember, it's the authority. The authority no. does not have to be not forceful. <laughs> oh, forceful. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> but it's the authority. That's what matters. It's the authority that comes from God. Not from books or from assignment or graduation of any sort. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. All right. <clears throat> okay, what was it? 3112? Did we do that one already? I think we did. Yep. Um, it was 14. Oh, we did? Okay, what? You want to go to 3114? Mm -hmm. Let's go to 3114. Let's go down the path. Okay, no, where's 13? We missed 13. Shall we read it? 13 and 14 are very All right, important. let's do 13 and 14. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, I know that if you shall follow the sun... So this is Nephi speaking. Follow, follow the sun. We also need to add that this is when he's passing away. Like, he's, he's ending his life, and this is what he's teaching. I know that if you follow the sun with full purpose of heart, acting no hypocrisy and no deception before God, but with real intent... Intent, oh, I looked up that word. Hold on a second. Integrity, sincerity, repenting of your sins, witnessing unto the Father that you're willing to take upon you the name of Jesus Christ. And I looked that word up. Um, your commitment to take upon you the name of Christ by baptism, yea, by following your Lord and your Savior down into the water according to his word, behold, then shall you receive the Holy Ghost. Yea, then come with the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost. And then you can speak with the tongue of angels and shout praises unto the Holy One of Israel. You do 14. But behold, my beloved brethren, thus came the voice of the Son unto me, saying, After you have repented of your sins and witnessed unto the Father that you are willing to keep my commandments, by baptism of water, and have received the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost, and can speak with a new tongue, yea, even with the tongue of angels, and after this should deny me, it should have been better for them that they had not known me. Meaning this, that after the baptism of water comes the baptism of fire, which is the baptism of, that you cannot deny. Like you might forget the water, <clears throat> you might forget the events of that day, but you can never forget the baptism of fire, for it burns in your soul and you cannot deny it. You, you know what I'm talking about. And if I talk, like the man that I was talking to yesterday, when I was coaching him, I said, do you remember how you felt? And he said, I can't deny it. That's why I haven't. I might not be as active, but I haven't left. Because he cannot deny the power of the Holy Ghost and the cleansing power that comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. And uh, <clears throat> there should be like fire. We should have put fire. <clears throat> the phrase like fanning the fire of your faith, you know, that fire, you're fanning it. You're like remembering your... You're, you're remembering these experiences, and it's really great to keep records and write in your journal these experiences happened in your life, so you can go back and read them and, and refire those, flame the fire. Rekindle the fire. No, but even like you do it through reading your scriptures daily, obviously, and doing other things, but it does help, you know? I'm doing some water and some fire. Oh, I like it. Okay. Okay. Now, the one part that really could be like, whoo, after I've done this, I'm good. I'm good. Wrong up. Um, <laughs> we have to go to verse 16. Let's go to verse 16. Okay? And now, my beloved brethren, I know mm. by this that unless a man shall endure to the end, in following the example of the Son of the living God, he cannot be saved. Snap! 
<laughs> well, actually, that's why it's so beautiful. It's because the sacrament. We have the sacrament. It's not a one-time deal? <laughs> wow. Yeah, we have the sacrament. Every week. That is an awesome mm -hmm. gift. I was thinking about, like, I sing in the choir with my daughter, and we go on Sundays. And as we're singing, we get to, like, watch the young priesthood holders. Um, just prepare the sacrament. My 13-year-old my son and some of his friends do it. And it's just really... It's just so wonderful to just observe how just like careful they are, you know, and it's like they really take a hold of this this responsibility. They, they go from ogres to holders of the priesthood. Yes. <laughs> you know? It's kind of funny. And I, I love that. Have you ever seen a 13 year old at a tea party? The wrinkle shirts. <laughs> a 13 year old at a tea party when he's putting like sugar and cream and his herbal <laughs> tea is going clang 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 and it's like tidal wave but when they prepare the sacrament no that's my dad <laughs> oh sorry jerry um let's go here let's talk about feasting because this is the one now you might think when we talk about feasting after you've endured to the end how do you stay on that pass you feast you get a feast you gotta read 20 first though i know but they go together you see how I put two arrows, a double arrow? Because enduring okay. and feasting go together. They okay. hold hands. They're friends. They're besties. Um, they have like a little locket. One half goes to one and one half goes to the other. They're like, oh, endure, I haven't seen you for so long. Um, this, is, this, is, this is that part. So we're going to go to verse 20. Okay. Wherefore, ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, hashtag tree of life, um, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the words of Christ, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. Go to chapter 32, verse 3. Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore, I said unto you, feast upon the words of Christ. For behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things what you should do. In my studies, the word feast was a religious celebration. Okay? So if you look at this, it would be like, Wherefore I say unto you that you must have a cel religious celebration of the words of Christ. So then there's the feast scripture that talks about the delighting of fatness. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and there's my Polynesian brothers, let's eat. Right? When we eat. Now, guys, I have never, ever in my life, I thought that we feasted. <laughs> and then I go to my friends in the Polynesian islands and I learned what a feast was. See, in our ward here, since returning home on mission, I cook puaka, or pigs, in the ground, like umu style. And I've done it for ward parties and things like that, and we'll cook for our whole ward two pigs. Two puaka, and two pigs. But, oh my gosh. if you go to the Tongan ward in Kahuku, and you go to their ward party, that's not just two pigs, it might be two pigs per family, right? Like, there's a lot of pigs. Like, there's like 30 pigs being pit, being roasted. But if you like take that analogy and like, that's the feasting that we're talking about, the spiritual feasting. There was a phrase in Tongan where it was like, eat until you're full, then sleep, komohe, and then eat some more. And they're like, I like this one. So sometimes in feasting upon the words of Christ, we feast until we are spiritually tired. And then we have a little break. And then we do it again. And then we go, this is so delicious, right? That's what you want to be feeling when you're reading the scriptures, like having that nourishment in your soul that like, oh, you're just like full, you're full. And then the Holy Ghost is like your bestie who's like helping you with all these mm. things in your life. And you're just going down that path. And it's not easy. As the prophet said, don't expect this to be easy. This is not what this means. Uh, oh, oh, you but, mean... <laughs> At this part right here, the opposition... Oh, wait. What we did not put is the arrows of opposition that are, like, pointed at every totally. aspect of the yellow brick road. <laughs> but we have the help we need. And that's why we go into angels. We need angels. Now go to verse 3. Chapter 32, verse 3. You get to read this one. I did verse 3, I, I, but I didn't do 2. Okay. Do you not remember... That I said unto you that after you've received the Holy Ghost, you could speak with the tongue of angels. And now, how could you speak with the tongue of angels save it were by the Holy Ghost? Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, wherefore they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore I say I said unto you, feast upon the words of Christ, for they shall the words of Christ will tell you all things what we should do, which is something you should read again, which you should do. 
So studying angels and speaking with the tongue of angels, like what does that mean, you know? And it made me think about missionary work for one. Speaking with the tongue of angels when you're preaching and you're speaking of Christ, this is how the missionaries speak. And they feast upon the words of Christ and they preach of Christ, they speak of Christ, they direct people to Christ, like, and they're doing it full time in their lives. It's awesome. If you were to hear an angel speak, you would feel the influence of the Holy Ghost testifying to you that it is true. And any time you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you speak as though the tongue of angels are speaking. It's synonymous together. And when you hear a testimony of someone who is full of faith and the Holy Ghost, it is as though they speak with the tongues of angels. When you hear a child bear testimony or a child sing and it sounds angelic, you will feel and know. Like how many of you have ever been to a meeting where you're like, angels were present? Or a temple session or a moment in the scriptures where you feel surrounded? Um, not all the time, but when we have, like, elder, like, when you feel the influence of the Holy Ghost in your life, you know the atonement is working in your life, and that Jesus, the Holy Ghost is present. It, I, there's no other way I can explain it, right? What are you looking for? Are your caveman scriptures not working? <laughs> They're not working very well. Oh, my, my, your, your spaceman <laughs> scriptures, for... my caveman scriptures never stop. Okay, I, I want to share a quote with you from Elder Holland. So I had a fun week studying the tongue of angels, angels, um, support, support from angels, heavenly angels, tongue of angels, how to speak, you know, with the tongue of angels. And he's talking about like, oh, I just want to read the very end, he says. So, so this is a talk, let's clarify. So people April are like, 2007, the tongue of angels. President or Elder Holland. He says, So, brothers and sisters, this is the very last part of his talk. In this long eternal quest to be more like our Savior, may we try to be perfect men and women in at least this one way, by offending not in word, or more positively put, by speaking with a new tongue, the tongue of angels. Our words, like our deeds, should be filled with faith and hope and charity, the three great. Christian imperative so desperately needed in the world today. With such words spoken under the influence of the Spirit, tears can be dried, hearts can be healed, lives can be elevated, hope can return, confidence can prevail. I pray that my words, even in this challenging subject, will be encouraging to you, not discouraging, that you can hear in my voice that I love you, because I do. More importantly, please know that your Father in Heaven loves you, and so does his only begotten son. When they speak to you, and they will, it will not be in the wind, nor in the earthquake, nor in the fire, but it will be a, a voice still and small, a voice tender and kind. It will be with the tongue of angels. May we all rejoice in that the thought that when we say edifying, encouraging things unto the least of these, our brethren and sisters and little ones, we say it unto God. Mm very clear but I just love that so go study that if you want to learn more about that I just want to give you the invitation to feel a little deeply more deeply as you feast upon the words of Christ that your eyes might be opened to what is around you because this is true like you you can look at this you see for some reason it goes like yeah I understand faith repentance baptism and enduring to the end I just got to white knuckle this but I'm gonna feast on my scriptures and then you don't look around for this promise the angels are there. Um, can you go to verse 4 and 9? And maybe you go, I, I've never had this experience, Steve, I don't know. And that's fine. But there's a way, like when we talk about asking and praying. So chapter 32, verse, verse 3, or verse 4 and then 9. Wherefore now, after I've spoken these words, if you cannot understand them, it's because you'll ask not, neither do you knock. Wherefore you're not brought into the light, but you must perish in the dark. Verse 9, But behold, I say unto you that you must pray always and not faint, that you must not perform anything unto the Lord, save in the first place you shall pray unto the Father, <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ, that he will consecrate thy performance unto thee, that thy performance may be for the welfare of thy soul. Um, this right here is Nephi's last invitation, that if you don't know all this, you could ask God. And his invitation is to really petition the Lord, on your behalf, that you might know and understand these things. 
Mm -hmm. um, as I was studying angels, um, President Nelson's wife, Wendy Nelson, Sister Nelson, um, she gave a talk on angels and taught, said that um, you can ask, you know, she, Elder Holland said this, he's like, ask for the angels to be dispatched to help you on this journey. And as all the arrows come at you and all the challenges that come through life, that we all are going through different challenges and hard things, um, the, through that refinement process, the Lord having that humility in your heart and asking for the help that you need through all these amazing blessings of the, um, the doctrine of Christ through the covenant path, um, but that he will consecrate your performance that it may be for the welfare, welfare of your soul, for thy soul, mm -hmm. that it will change your soul, it will help you turn to the Savior, and it will cleanse and purify you and it'll help you to become more like your Savior, which is we we want to develop these Christ-like characteristics. And we cannot do it with ne without opposition, without challenges, without struggle. We have to go to those places <clears throat> and be open to them. But we have so much help. And our Savior has given us the atonement, the most beautiful gift of repentance, renewing our baptismal, baptismal covenants, the gift of the Holy Ghost, Angels, all of the things that we need. Sounds like we're well equipped. We are not alone. You are not alone. <clears throat> Turn to the last chapter, chapter 33. Um, and let's go to verse 10 and 11. Okay. And now, my beloved brethren, also Jew and all the ends of the earth, hearken unto these words and believe in Christ. And if you will believe not in these words, believe in Christ. And if you shall believe in Christ, you will believe in these words, for they are the words of Christ. And he hath given them unto me, that they teach all men that they should do good. And if they are not the words of Christ, judge ye. For Christ will show unto you with power and great glory that they are his words. The invitation to come to Jesus Christ, or to feast with Jesus, is an invitation for all the world. It's your choice. Um, and this path is one that we all get to be on. We're all on it together. We're all in this together. Okay? We get to do this together. Um, but I know it's true. And I felt the influence of the Holy Ghost. And I can testify that this is the doctrine of Jesus. So we hope that you feel inspired and um, have some insight on what you need to do on your walk with Christ and following Him. We love you. We are so grateful for you. Thank you so much for joining us and for being our friends and reaching out to us and supporting us in so many ways. We are so grateful for you. The word of the week this week is feast. Feast. Mm. Feast. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay? Let's get that and get your scriptures out and we're going to feast upon the words of Christ. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Love you. Bye.